Hello everyone, and welcome back to Hat USA, or I guess Hattusha if you're trying to be a little bit better about this. But yeah, it's been a while, but we are going to continue our Supalilayuma campaign. If I remember right, things got pretty dicey on the last episode as we ran into a pretty extraordinary number of enemies, and we had a lot of issues with like huge enemy armies kind of surrounding us now. We do have a, a few more of the Phrygians left over here, just off to our west, and I am having to settle down. Uh, this is the Sea People, I think, who walked up on me over here. And I can't remember. I, yeah, they've got this settlement under siege. So we'll just go ahead and decline to attack there. We'll leave that alone, and we're going to try and make our way back over there. But yeah, so we've got to deal with the Sea People. And they had been invading, typically speaking, from my south here. I had another army down here trying to get in their way, and we had just taken over a bronze settlement, and then we had gotten yet another bronze settlement here where the Sea People destroyed an allied settlement. Um, so yeah, we got some work to do. I did have a comment early on in my live chat that's talking about my um, ancient legacy. So I'll take a look at that here in a moment, but I just wanted to go ahead and say hello to everybody who is live, and hello to anybody who's watching afterwards. Do appreciate it. I'm doing my single player content via streams now, so that I can do them in longer episodes of about two to two and a half hours. And there'll be one a week, uh, which honestly, if I do two to two and a half hours of each single player campaign, once a week, that's probably more than you would have gotten otherwise, because it takes a lot of extra time to do all the editing and uploading and thumbnails and all the stuff that goes along with making the video separate. Um, so in order to balance things, though, I will answer questions from the live crew during turn-ins and loading screens. And of course, if you're watching this after, feel free to skip over those. But hopefully that gives you a little bit of a recap on where things were. Uh, hopefully we can also settle down the sea people here. You can see that uh, they uh, continue to have waves incoming. I don't really understand how these mechanics work because the game is still relatively new to me. So that will be a bit of learning. Also, if my voice does sound a little nasally, I think some people think it sounds that way all the time, and it may. Uh, but I have some kind of weird allergy thing going on. It's still there. I got some better de decongestant today that helped quite a bit, so I'm feeling better at the moment. Um, but I don't know if I sound any better, so we, we will see. Uh, but in any case, let's get back into things here. So people were talking about the ancient legacy. Um, I'm trying to remember where we take a look at that kind of stuff. Diplomacy, Royal Decrees. I know I could see it with Super Lyuma. At least I thought it was whenever we go into... I will not let my kingdom be torn asunder. Was it the ancient legacy like that allowed us to assign like a prince thing? And I thought we assigned that to this... Let's see, Heart of Turn, uh, Royal Steward. I don't remember exactly how the ancient legacy thing works, so whoever made that comment, if you want to give me a little bit more information, I'll take a look at it. Again, a lot of this is still very new to me. Let's see, it says legacy... Okay, this is, I think, the ancient legacy. It says legacy of... Tuthalia is one of the most prudent statecraft. Assign your generals as princes of a vassal, and they can assume powerful titles. So we'll assign him as a prince there. I think this is what they were talking about, making sure that we had them assigned, so thank you for that. Prince Authority... Attitude... Okay, so I think this is what they were talking about, it's just making sure that that general had been assigned um, to that uh, vassal. I don't think we have other vassals, so I'm not sure if it'll work, but yeah, there we go. There we go. <laughs> Sorry, I said I would answer these during the turn-in, but this is a particularly funny comment. Uh, T-Rex says in the live one, Call me silly, but I think the sea people should have really unique units, like fish-slapping guards. You know, they, they have a sword with a giant fish tail on it, and they just they go through battle slapping you until you have a red fish fin imprinted on your face. You'll never forget the sea people. Doing my duty. <laughs> I like that idea. All right. Your faith in Corunta. Corunta, we lost a barter agreement with him. Let's kind of remind myself where we're at. We are in a pretty big hole with food in terms of income per turn, but we do have a lot of food in terms of, like, a rather sizable um, storage of it. Uh, we have only a modest wood income, 
and we were giving a chunk of it to Corinthian. He was giving us some food back in return. We could continue this, but honestly, I might go ahead and use the wood and make sure that we can build all the buildings. But at the same time, little things like this could be good because I do believe it kind of builds relationships with these other characters. And we probably should, I believe, if I remember right, uh, Karunta, he's another Hittite, right? Yeah, because we have the same icon shape there. So it may not be a bad idea to kind of make friends here. So I actually think I'll go ahead and propose that with him and just hopefully keep some good relations going with some folks because the AI has been super aggro on us and somewhat understandable. Um, and right now it's stating that we're in a bit of a crisis here too. And I don't know exactly what drives this or if it's just, you know, something that comes along with the game or if it's... I'm trying to remember exactly what drives this crisis thing. It could be... 440 points, like what drives the points. A few turns, beginning of a turn. I, I don't know if this is like from battles or factions being destroyed or wars declared or if it's just something that kind of cycles with the game. Um, but there's ups and downs to these crisis things. I think it has impacts on certain, like, food production and other production, stuff like that. Um, if I remember right, it's supposed to be kind of like an Attila when you kind of had those, had things moving towards being less fertile and, and more difficult to handle. Extra recruitment slots is pretty cool. Uh, let's, let's remind myself where we were at, by the way. Um, I think I needed to end a turn. Great King of we were force marching over here to try and drive the sea people back. And it does say on our local deities. Um, it says we have something going on here. Worshipped all gods. Is this Hittite gods? I think it's because we discovered, yeah, new gods here. Now, I believe we can only worship one right now. And it says unlock the slot to be able to devote another general. And then for worship god slot, it says required preparation against reprisal. So it says you need to enact the required decree to unlock this slot. So as far as decrees go, I believe that is over here. It'd be one of the, one of these bits here that allows us to have another worship slot. And someone was saying in the last one that I probably should be focused on getting more gods to worship because I think you get the benefits from it. Diplomatic relations, construction time. Let's see if we can find it here. Ancillary chances. This tree is not very easy to follow and you kind of have to look all over. There's a search, but I'm not... Deities. Every time I use the search, like I'm not really able to have it do anything. <laughs> um, maybe we have to get the exact name. Let's see if I can make it work here. So if I go back over here, it says we need the preparation against reprisal. But if you have to search by the name of it, I mean, I don't know who. Oh, look, it's responding there and it's the shape, the same shape there. Okay, so it is this one. All right, so the search does work, and it looks like it's something that kind of just starts to light up certain ones that might be applicable. Okay, so I understand the search. That's nice to have. Uh, let's go ahead and focus on that god dedication slot. Um, I haven't been super excited about the other tech in this game. That's been a little bit of my complaints over the last one is that the tech seems a little bit underwhelming. Um, but let's try that one and see if it gets us anything else. We have these other reminders. We've got a court action. Be seated, peers of the court. Looks like we've just done a lot of gossiping so far. We could take a ruling on this one, so let's do that. So close that. We've taken care of that, and here's our ruling. Two heirs, one field. Two noblemen died in battle in defense of the kingdom. Their sons approach you to demand compensation. There is a field outside the city that would suit the purpose perfectly, but though in a prime position it would be too small to share, the issue has gained some prominence. Basically, we got to pick, so we can side with the Caskian, which is going to give us lowered recruitment costs for six turns, and it, we can do the other one, which gives us lower recruitment cost of Phrygian units. This one's lower recruitment cost of Caskian units. I don't know that either one of these are going to be particularly useful um, to me, and then decide later. 
Uh, this may allow us to come back to it later. I don't know, I've never done this one. Let's try that and see if it lets us come back to it when maybe it will be of more value to me. I think we have to click on these to actually get that little thing to go away. I'm trying to get the, uh... Yeah, there's the back button. That's what I'm looking for. I want to look at some of the bonuses here. Uh, workforce growth, devoted general. So when we, dote of, when we devote a general, he gets melee defense for chariots, extra 10 armor, and a charge bonus of 22% for chariots. So that one's chariot focused. And then what about these other ones? This one gets a charge bonus to his bodyguard and gets movement restored after battle. That's actually pretty neat, getting extra movement after a battle. Then the army gets a lot of speed, which could be handy. So this this would be one to keep in mind, I think, whenever we open up another slot. This one lowers fatigue buildup. That's a lot of extra melee attack at 18%. And that's a lot of extra melee damage. So I think one of these two, so... Shauska? Shauska? Or Karunta. Um, those might be good ones there. So let's keep those in mind. And let's look at the rest of our pending actions here. I have a decent bit of stone and wood, so there's probably some construction actions that we, we might want to take care of. It's talking to us about um, outpost here. And in terms of outpost, uh, this is a bronze producing thing. It might not be a bad idea to get this economic outpost, which will boost production a little bit here. And of course there's religious outpost. Let's try those. And then we've got Hattusa here. Again, more settlement or outpost reminders. Then we have construction reminders at a bunch of different cities as well. Uh, we recently, I think, took charge of the city, being threatened by those rebels. I'm actually not, I'm going to be shocked if the sea people don't double back on us here, which is a little bit worrying because I really do need that bronze producing settlement. This bronze is going to be a lifeline for us to be able to get better units and have an easier time Water crushing our enemies. Blood. So I feel like that those are going to be very, very important to us. But as far as where I probably need to spend some effort, this is newly conquered territory. Our happiness is pretty low because we're, we're probably uh, busy like working on this influence, but um, we have a fair bit of influence here. So our Hittite influence is high and rising. Uh, so the happiness, I'm guessing, is just due to, yeah, the provincial instability, military presence, taxes. So there's a lot of things going on here. Um, this one's going to give us production of resources, which is nice. I mean, this is kind of cool, but we might be better off with something that kind of buffs up happiness in its place. So I might demolish that building and put in one that focuses on happiness. This one adds legitimacy. Influence. Fun. Let's build these. Okay. More construction details. There's probably other buildings we can build, but we are a little bit lower on resources, so I might just go ahead and end the turn here because I want to get my movement points. I'm going to get to some of these comments. And by the way, let me go back and say thank you to um, Mobson, uh, who was the one who mentioned the legacy thing to me. So thank you for reminding me of that um, and giving me the instructions there. Definitely appreciate it. And let's say hi to everybody else who's joined. So Philip, Bashar, Mobson, Senshi, thanks for being one of our channel members. Captain Pip, thanks for joining. Niven, Iron Maul. Um, we got Beats and Drum or Beats and Drums. And let's see, Warner, thanks for joining us. He says they have the gall, the chespa to call themselves the sea people when they aren't made out of sea. I know. It's it's insane. And I got to your comment, T-Rex. Thanks also for being a channel member. You too, Warner. And then Sean, thanks for joining us tonight. <laughs> he said that they should have octopus slingers. <laughs> yeah, they have a sling in all eight arms, and they just spin around in circles. It's like a repeating slinger. I like it. See? Now we're getting some units for the sea people. Now we're getting some units. Emil says tech is kind of weird. They're individually underwhelming, but it adds up. Yeah, I'm guessing that's got to be the, the ticket they were going for. Like, none of them sound like... 
too amazing to me, but if you just keep unlocking more and more, may maybe it adds up over time. Maybe that's what it is, so we'll see. And then Francesco, thanks for joining. Thanks for being a channel member. Brian, or yeah, Bran White, thanks for joining. And then I'm probably innocent. Thanks for joining in. Appreciate you all being here. Uh, so we are allies being attacked um, by the Casca invaders. So let's, let's join. We have a settlement besieged. I'm not surprised that was where the, the rebels were. And I'm kind of glad they sieged instead of just like taking off running. This will just give me a chance to kill them off here. So let's kill them. Not much to see here. Uh, pass judgment to the rebels. What is this? Fight battle. Pass judgment to the rebels. What is pass judgment? What is this button? How did, and how did I not see this before? Is this a special ability? I'm gonna like... Do a quick save here, and I'm gonna see what this past judgment is. I think, was that the ability thing that I get? I remember it mentioning an ability about getting rid of a, a rebel army. Yeah, yeah, that's what that was. It was like an ability or something we picked up from one of the, uh, the people in the court, I think. That's probably why I haven't seen it yet. I think it was the court. The thousand gods bear witness. We are called to noble work. Yeah, I think it was the court. Thanks for subscribing, probably innocent. Um, I want to say there was one of these guys. Builder wages. Or maybe it's one of our special abilities. As the judge, I can't remember. I don't remember how we got it. I think it, I thought it was from somewhere here at court somewhere. The past judgment. That's kind of cool because then we can just ward them off and not even have to. Hattie will rise again. Not even have to fight them there. Now that there's continues to be a sea people presence over here. I thought there was maybe another one this way, but now I don't see it. We need to keep our um, we need to keep our bronze supply safe. For Hattie's glory. Looks like happiness is recovering there. Um, yeah, so there we go. Just uh, we do have our bronze production here, which is good. I am ready. Nissa has wood. Actually, we should beeline it for for Nissa. We must be ruthless and take that, because then we can get some wood production as well. And it looks, yeah. So the sea people were sieging me here, but they've got another. Now this is a rebel army here. I am busy right now. Okay, so we've got a, a bit of a rebellion there too. I, I know I'm in force march, but I can't quite reach these guys, and I'm worried if I don't, they're just going to attack me. Um, so I'm gonna move up here, and again, I know it's a force march, but I'm gonna do this in order to try and ward these guys off without losing the settlement. We'll see whether or not this was the wrong decision here shortly. If it is, then I'll have to own that. We have, it looks like, different production here. So the capital um, can help us produce stone. And it is busy producing a decent amount of stone for us. I believe this is where I wanted to put in something to boost our happiness. Which this garrison station can boost, it looks like, happiness at least a little bit while handing us a better garrison. It's not a huge happiness boost, but it is some, so that might be good. We can get a little bit from this temple as well. We could also get legitimacy and then a reduction of upkeep for our units in this in this uh, province. Additional happiness when we build it up. So, I mean, a religious building here, it looks like, could be good. I don't have a lot of good recruitment, but I also am not attempting to do a lot of recruitment at the moment. Though I will be soon, now that we're able to stockpile some bronze. I think that will definitely be something that we're interested in. Food, bronze, gold... For this province, province refers to the whole thing. Well, we do have bronze in here, so this this could give us extra bronze production in this province by building this, and it can go up to 20%. 
That is a pretty big boost. It's going to hurt happiness, though, so we might want to bring that one in later once we've kind of settled the place down some. This one is just a happiness-focused building chain here that also has some influence. And this might be the most appropriate for the time being in terms of turning around some of the, the happiness issues. There's influence, movement, happiness, and a little bit of food. That safe haven. Let's build that for now. And then we have another building available to us. Like, I'm, I'm kind of curious to build this temple here. Alright, so we got the temple going. We've got some actions, one of which will be our court action for this turn. I've got a lot of influence with these characters. Let's see if there's anything worth requesting. Um, quest. So army wages or elite warriors. Connections or assassinations. Gain it for use of the cease intrigue until the end of the turn. Which I think puts an end to a plot. I remember right. Oh, we got some embezzling. I mean, I, I'm always down for some good embezzling here. I have vowed to use my so let's do that. And then we can't take this a ruling, of course, because we're out of turns for this turn. But also because we've already done it this year, I think you can only do the take a ruling once a year. And that leaves me with some settlement upgrades to so Ziplandia. We could upgrade to a royal estate here, which would be nice. I think we should. It does require gold, which is pretty expensive, but I mean, we have a good a bit of gold. This is less than a turn's worth of gold for us, so this feels like it would be a good move. Because um, that's really the only downside, is paying the gold there. And then at Ziplandia, we have buildings available as well. We did build, it looks like, a re one recruiting chain there. And I need idle workforce for the others. So let's take a look at the other construction available. And decide whether we want to make any moves this turn. We got training grounds, which gives me recruitment slots, but I'm, I don't have anything else built for recruiting here. So this building is honestly probably out of place because this is not a recruiting-focused settlement, at least at the moment. Then our bronze settlement, it makes me wonder whether we can defend it, which we can. This one provides additional garrison, that one does too. But, uh, let's see, this, this one provides a reduction in bronze upkeep or recruitment costs from stuff in this province. But again, this is not really going to be my recruiting province, so uh, we probably want the garrison quarter at tier 3. Got the bronze. We could put in a basic recruiting building, or we can just focus on one of these, which spreading some happiness in the province is going to be useful because we're not going to own the uh, the main, or the capital settlement here. Let's go ahead and end this turn and see what happens. I'll get to a few more of your comments. Uh, Niven, or sorry, uh, Francesco was asking if you missed much, and of course Niven answered, but I'll answer as well. No, you haven't missed much. We're relatively just getting started here. Um, and then Bashar was reminding me that, that that ability to kind of dismiss the rebels came from uh, the High Judge, which I believe is a position we occupy at the moment. So it's probably a special one that we get there. But, yeah, thank you. Um, Dylan says, I remember watching this guy play Rome Total War 2 years ago. Can't believe I stumbled into this randomly. Well, thanks for coming by, even if it was random. And yeah, I remember playing Rome 2 all those years ago, too. It was a lot of fun. And I still enjoy Rome 2. In fact, I recorded a battle on it last night. And I love playing the, um, I love playing the multiplayer battles there. Uh, is this the settlement I was close to? We're not going to win this, whatever the case, which kind of sucks. Um, so I'm not going to waste my time. I don't really like these small settlement battles anyway, and this one looks like it's pointless. We have two Sea People armies that converged on me. That was not the one I was standing next to. Uh, these are the guys... I'm, I'm just down here to the south and the east of the camera, and they just marched past me. And then this is what I figured these guys would do, is run off and raid something else. It saves that settlement, which I don't want to lose because it has the bronze, but I also knew this would be... Uh, pretty infuriating because the AI will just keep running around and raiding and they unfortunately never seem to make a focus of killing the player's army which would help them gain a decisive victory and I think this like run around and raid behavior 
is probably quite appropriate when it comes to like low difficulty settings. And the reason I say that is, is because when an AI army runs around just going for weak stuff to raid, it helps a player who's not as good have multiple chances to stop that AI army. Whereas, um, let's see, we got to join here as well. Um, whereas, like, I think on a higher difficulty level, if the sea people, for instance, marks, marched up here with like four or five stacks, and their main objective is to come take out my capital, or to come and seek a decisive battle with my main armies, that would make for a whole lot more challenging um, uh, bit of difficulty, because then the player will have to take on these difficult armies and defeat them. Uh, whereas in this case, uh, they pretty much just run away from me. And it's like, oh, look, we went and tore your city down. I, okay, good for you. I'm, I'm going to rebuild it. Like, it sucks for the moment, but uh, really doesn't do anything to me, you know, for all intents and purposes. So that's why I don't understand some of the programming. So it's like, okay, cool. Tore down my settlement. Now what? Like this guy, hey, you went out here and raided my outpost. Now what? Always vigilant. So, like for instance, watch. I'll uh, I'll head into an ambush stance. I can probably lure these guys right back by parking right here in an ambush stance. I'm gonna try and lure them back over so we can kill them, and then I'm gonna move towards that other settlement to try and occupy it. And in the meantime, we'll just continue to to build up, uh, you know, intrigue in the court. It looks like we could do some gossiping here to get some influence on this Good guy in case we need it, because we used it to do the embezzling. And mentions there's a plot against me, or it's not against me, it's against someone else, so I don't really care. And then let's check our reminders here as well. So we have another settlement upgrade. This one is for a bronze settlement, and I do want to make this upgrade. I'm a little worried about it because we still have incoming waves of sea people. But at the same time, like I'm going to have to try and make this settlement more defensible. I can spend gold to increase it instantly, but I don't think we need to. It's only a one-turn build time, so let's just wait on that one. All right, now we have these empty building slots that I cleared out last time. And if we look here, it would be good to stabilize happiness and then a defense here. I think both would be appropriate. So I'm going to do that, put in a defense there. This building is reducing recruitment cost. Again, I, I don't really have a whole lot of recruiting open here, so that's probably a waste of time. Now, I can build some recruiting here, but that's not what I have available to me at the moment. So, let's see. So, happiness, workforce growth, replenishment, influence. Let's work. Let's do this uh, refugee center, at least for now. It's not going to do anything amazing for us, but it will be useful. A lot of construction going back here, and if I have the resources for it, again, these defense buildings would be handy to help us hold these places. Uh, if we end up with rebels behind us, if we end up with sea people behind us, get a couple more comments here. Um, I'm probably innocent, says you got me into Rome too. I liked it until I had 90% corruption. <laughs> yeah, that gets a little crazy if it gets too out of hand there. It looks like the uh, Phrygians. Is that the Phrygians? I think that's the Phrygians still going at us here. We need to take care of them. Igor says the sea people could be like a crusade. Yeah, kind of. If they came in in a big group, like going for a specific target. Yeah, look, we've tricked him here. He, I think he just saw our ambush. Because he didn't move all the way up. Either that or he didn't see the ambush and he was raiding and only moved up slightly closer. Looks like we got the Casca invaders here. And again, they're just going to go for minor settlements and run around like idiots. So we'll keep an eye out on them as well. It's Shimsu Hor. Everybody celebrate. Two heirs. Ah. Yeah, two heirs on the field. Um, this isn't... Okay, so it looks like we waited and it came back just later. So cool. Good. Um, sure, I'll trade my court action for a little bit of gold. Um, let's see here. So these guys, they're not part of a rebel crew. 
I would advise against They're part of the invaders, the Casca invaders. That's gonna be annoying. Like it's gonna be incredibly annoying having in fact I just I don't like this type of thing in general where CA is just spawning crap stacks behind us, like these invaders and stuff. To me, this doesn't add much to the gameplay other than nuisance factor. If you're going to spawn a stack, spawn it and have it come fight my army, because this is total war, not like total shrine defense or total crap stacks where I have to have crap stacks everywhere and they have crap stacks everywhere and then it just turns into like all these skirmishes, so... I don't mind the whole spawned army things, but I think of it more like in Warhammer 3 where they have the rogue armies. And they'll spawn a rogue army, and it's usually a big army, and it's kind of fun to fight. And they will stick around where you can fight them on open ground and kind of get an enjoyable battle out of it. Versus this stuff um, sometimes kind of seems like you're just chasing trash stacks. So, which I don't find to be very fun. I do want to kill these sea people because I feel like I owe it to them or them running around in my land and irritating me, so. Alex says, no Star Trek Infinite campaign gameplay. Yes, I am planning to do some. Here's here's what I'm working on, Alex. That's a good question. Not just Star Trek Infinite, but there's other games coming up. Like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna cover um, Warhammer Realms of Ruin soon as well. Um, I, I need to finish some of these campaigns because my idea is where I do this single player gameplay, I still wanna have one Total War campaign going at any given time. But then I want to have two slots open. One to either do some Total War multiplayer, or two slots open to just do different games. And I want to cover some different games. It's been a long time since I, I really did a whole lot different on the channel. And I think that interest in Total War right now is very low. I'm not giving up on Total War. I intend to cover it going forward. Anytime there's new content, I'm going to cover it. We'll still keep playing campaigns, so again, it's not me just like giving up on Total War, but my interest in Total War is kind of low right now because of all the mess that's going on. A lot of other people have a somewhat lower interest in Total War at the moment. Um, not everybody, but many people do. And it's just kind of a way for me to give myself a break and do something different uh, and try new things because sometimes you try new things and you enjoy it and you end up wanting to do more of it. So that's kind of my, my mindset right now, is I want to try some new games. I have been very dedicated to Total War for a very long time, and that's not a bad thing. I'm very happy I have been, it's been a lot of fun. But I just want to try something different. And so the Star Trek Infinite would be another one of those games where I might decide one week, hey, we're going to play Star Trek Infinite on this day. Um, and then, you know, on another day I might do something like the Realms of Ruin or whatever other new games are out there. People have mentioned others that are coming up, like Manor Lords, and Homeworld 3 is coming up, and I will absolutely be covering Homeworld 3 actively. I intend to play the single player, and I also want to do some streams where we play some multiplayer. Um, so there are definitely a lot of games coming up. I, I'm, when I pick games, I'm going to try and make them relevant in the sense that this channel has always been grounded mostly around strategy games. So it will mostly focus on strategy games, but obviously I reserve the right to cover pretty much whatever. Um, so we'll uh, take a look at things as it comes. But yeah, hopefully that makes sense in terms of what I'm planning to do with the uh, the streams. But in order for me to do more of that, Alex, I, I want to go ahead and finish up some of these campaigns. I'm very close to being finished with Mother Ostankia and you and Bo. I think each of those maybe has one, two episodes left tops. So here very soon, I should have um, a streaming slot open to cover these new games more. And I'm, I'm excited about it. But uh, I think Homeworld 3, as far as strategy games, is the most exciting thing coming up for me. I loved the Homeworld games when I was younger. And I still love them, and they made the remastered versions of them on Steam, and they are very... I forgot my general. <laughs> He's like way back somewhere else. <laughs> Whoops. Kind of forgot about the king. Who needs Super Liliuma? There's too many syllables in his name, and he got left behind. Um, but yeah, I'm super excited for Homeworld 3. I hope they knock it out of the park. Um, some of the recent work from that studio uh, included, like, Homeworld Deserts of Karak, which to me was a very underappreciated... Um, real-time strategy title. It was a very good game, and I had so much fun with that one, and I'm, I'm very much looking forward to a, a proper homeworld title again, a new one. It's been a very long time since we've seen one. I backed it on Fig, so like I, I, I did the, the backing on Fig, which is of course always a risk. 
I've backed games before on Fig that ended up being really crappy and that I regretted, but you know, hey, it is what it is. Like, if you don't sometimes take an opportunity to support something you think you like, then you may never end up with something you like. But of course, you know, you all don't have to do that either. It was something I chose to do. Not expecting other people to go out on a limb and stick some money into something. Make sure you use your money the way you need to. Uh, but yeah, I think Homeworld 3 has the potential to be an absolute excellent strategy game. Uh, Blackbird Studios, who's making it, like I said, they did very, very good with Deserts of Karak. And I'm super excited for this one. We had that Elite Axe unit I left back there, too. Left all my good units in the back. And I still haven't moved my general, even though I thought I did. That was just the other Axe unit. Alex says, I'd love to see Halo Wars 2 again. So would I. Uh, Halo Wars 2 was really fun. And again, it's another one that I, I, I think kind of went underappreciated. And it was made by Creative Assembly. And I, I just have to sit here and think to myself at least a little bit. Can you imagine if instead of wasting a bunch of time on a hyena's, like, kind of shooter game, which is just another skin store shooter game, you know, it's like a game that's made for a skin store. Like, instead of wasting time on that development, I, imagine if they would have put CA to work on an epic new strategy game that actually fits their player base. You know? Like, they did a good job on Halo Wars 2, and they could have made, you know, their own strategy game with its own universe. They could have, you know, looked out and tried to get, like, a Lord of the Rings IP. They could have done a whole bunch of different things. And instead, it's like, hey, let's let's develop the shooter game, and then let's cancel the shooter game. I, I don't understand the thinking that went into Hyenas, and I never will. It was incredibly stupid, because... I think CA has a lot of potential to deliver on certain types of games, and Hyenas was not one that any of their fans was asking for, like, at all. I'm not sure that anybody was asking for it, period. But yeah, there was a lot of things that they, they could have been doing, in my opinion, instead. Uh, so I am, I am excited to try out new strategy games. I love real-time strategy. Of course, Total War, to me, is just kind of like a, a, uh, a different variant of real-time strategy games. It's kind of like real-time strategy mixed with, um, I don't know, like, whatever you call it, dedicated battles and stuff. But it's a turn-based campaign map. I feel like the battles are actually more like the real-time strategy piece, and then the campaign map, of course, is like a turn-based strategy. So, it is, uh, it is unique, and I like it, and I always will because of its uniqueness. But I also like traditional real-time strategy games when they're made right. They're a lot of fun. There's kind of a satisfying feel sometimes to, like, base building and, and all the stuff that goes into them. And I can think of a lot of real-time strategy games that I still thoroughly enjoy, like Age of Empires 3, um, the Homeworld games that I just mentioned, um, and Star Wars Empire at War. They had a couple of Star Trek RTS games, too. Was that Armada? Those were fun. Like, I just, I like real-time strategy games, and I would love to have more of them. I gotta turn on my fan real quick, I'll be right back. I am proud of you men. Okay. So, a solid victory over the fish people. And uh, we're gonna put them down. I'll go ahead and replenish my units. We took a little more damage than I would've liked there, but to be fair, you I think the sea people have them. some decent units. Um, they're Experience they're going to be fairly wisdom. fairly well put together armies in terms of like potential for damage and stuff. To I'm gonna start moving back this way towards Ankara. We need to retake this settlement over here as well, and I'll have to catch up with the Sea People. Can anybody in the chat, whether after watching like watching this later or currently, um, can anybody tell me when the Sea People spawn? Do they typically always come from the same direction, or can they spawn up in different places? Uh, I'm just, I'm curious that, about that. So, l let me know if you know the answer to that. I need to keep learning little bits and pieces about this game that I, I haven't learned already. So, Superlaliuma is going to gain a level here, and I've been working on this reduced upkeep skill tree the whole way through, and I'm going to keep doing that until we, you know, reduce the upkeep on these armies as much as possible. This character has not leveled up. And then when I'm looking at assigned titles, we've got everything assigned that can be assigned. Same thing here. Same thing here. So we should be good. Oh, 
All right. Let's see. Veteran Dang it. These losers took over that settlement. I wanted that. So where did they come from? I go wherever strife goes. Who is this? Okay, their main settlement's way down here. How irritating. So they just, like, beelined an army all the way up here and got there one turn before me. Go on, then. Speak plainly. How irritating. I wanted that settlement, you jerks. Gosh dang it. Ate that. AI is, like, magnetized to the I settlements, whether it's again. to come and raid and destroy yours, or whether it's to just steal them out from under your nose. Make like, they are absolutely bound and determined March, to get a hold of your settlements. I'll just head this way. I don't know where those other Sea People army went to. I think they're behind the Fog of War somewhere over here. So I'll just head that direction. I'm not thrilled about how exposed... Uh, that settlement is, or honestly even this one, but I am putting in some defense at Kanesh and at Mokisos we could probably do the same thing. We just have to get it to tier 3 first, which it is not ready for tier 3 yet. Local deities, devotion slots. Wait a minute, local deities? We have... I thought we were already worshipping local deity. What am I missing here? Wait. Huh? All gods. Egyptian. I thought we had one up there. Something happened? Does it like switch every now and then? I just built a temple. Did, did we build the temple and it switches it for me? Maybe that's what happened. We built the temple and it switched it for me. Huh. Okay, so this is one that gives us the speed. Maybe this is the one we already had? I don't know. But like now I'm wondering if I, when I built that temple, does it automatically build to the god that you're dedicated to? Or did I build one and then it swapped? Um, I'm curious, like if you understand what just happened here, help me understand it, please. Because I would appreciate that. Serving you, I serve the people. Okay. We have it is time plots. Cattle and coin and Looks like there was a the successful people. blackmail there. Court actions. Okay. No more court actions for this turn. Outpost construction, construction available. Okay, so we have an empty building slot here. And this is a settlement where I need to kind of ensure that we build our influence and keep it happy for now. This one's building influence. We're getting a little bit of happiness from that one. And then we've got this, this building here. Was this where we were going to build an additional... I think we were going to put in an additional religious building here for now to try and help shore that up. Um, construction available... There's nothing else I want to build there for the moment, because I want that last building there to be a defensive structure. And then this settlement or this province up here, we're still dealing with unhappiness. So I'm gonna shore that up. And then let's take a look here. Is that building? So a Hittite way station, trading post. Hittite way station it was this building. Refund 50% of the movement speed.
upkeep of units stationed in the fort. All right, I'm just trying to use up some of this bit of resources we have. Tusha, we could we could upgrade this building here and be ready to recruit high tier archers, which would be handy because we've had really sorry archers so far, and having some good archers would not only vary up our battles a little bit, but it would help us a lot in battle. And then here again, we can improve this to get access to better units. Let's do that. Now let's go ahead and end our turn here. Sean's asking what my specs are. Um, right now, I haven't upgraded my PC in a long time for me. It's probably still rather new for what most people do, but I, I was really into buying and upgrading all the computer parts. I absolutely loved it and did it all the time, partly because I was sponsored by MSI for a while and it made it a little easier, but I just really enjoyed it. Uh, but then whenever inflation went through the roof and we got price gouged for two years on GPUs, I don't think these companies realized that some of the greedy actions like that have impacts on customers' buying habits, and I have hardly bought any computer parts since all the gouging. Um, and even now, when the prices are down, like every time I go to buy it, I'm dissuaded from buying something because I'm so irritated about how much money I've had to spend on everything else. Because everything is so expensive, so... Again, I mean, the prices go up. At some point, people just aren't going to spend the money. And uh, eventually that's going to lead to companies starting to fall apart and having to drop their prices or other things. Like, I don't know, it's not going to work out. But um, my specs, I'm using, uh, I've got a Ryzen 5950X processor and a uh, Radeon 6900 XT graphics card. And I'm running 32 gigs of DDR4 RAM. I haven't come onto the newer platforms with DDR5 RAM because it looks like only in the last few major games is the DDR5 kind of starting to make a difference in the performance and its price is coming down some. So I think either late this year or next year, I've been saving money that I get in tips on the channel or just some of the money that I earn on the channel from ads. And every now and then I take some of that money and I upgrade war. my keep PC to keep it relevant where I can bring you all good quality videos. Keep moving. I've been considering, and I'm curious what people say, but like, for instance, if I started uploading videos in 4k would you be able to watch or enjoy them in 4k because to me that seems like something i could offer you all but i don't know how many people would actually be able to use it um and that's important you know like if i'm going to offer it i actually want it to be something that that's useful to people um so yeah I'd be curious whether anybody would be interested in, in 4K videos. Again, if you're watching this live, watching it afterwards, let me know what you think. But I think fortunately, like this game actually runs really smooth. Like I, I think on the report that my graphics software gives me, it was saying that over the last few weeks as I've run this game, I've averaged like 110 frames per second and I'm running it on like highest settings on 1440p. It runs way better than Warhammer 3, like in terms of smoothness and performance. This game, I wish Warhammer 3 ran as smooth as this game. So, but yeah, so the main reason why I haven't upgraded to 4K up to this point was Total War games ran so bad that running them in 4K, you'd have to like turn it down to medium settings to get 60 frames a second most of the time. Or I'd have to go out and spend like $2,000 on a 4090, and I don't want a big 4090 graphics card. They're enormous and overkill and expensive and uh, all that kind of stuff. So, And then I have to buy a 4K monitor, um, which is also expensive, which again, I don't, I don't mind doing. But I know back in the day when I had mentioned this, I started to bring it up with people, and people were like, yeah, I can't even watch it in 4K. Like, my internet's too crappy or whatever else it is. Um, and so I just, that's why I haven't pushed into 4K, um, yet, but I mean, if there's enough people, like, who want to watch it, like, I have a 4K TV in the living room that I can watch YouTube on, um, I have, I can watch a 4K video on my phone, I think a lot of people have that capability on their phone, looks like we have another wave incoming, so, yeah, that's, um, that's the specs on my computer, roughly this speaking. It's running all the Total War games with ease. No problem. 
And since I run everything in 1440p too, it's my graphics card handles everything that I can throw at it. Honestly, the only thing that the AMD card I have isn't great at is ray tracing. But um, <laughs> I, I'm gonna say this, and some people might get mad at me for it, and that's fine. If you differ in opinion with me, that's that's cool. I don't hold it against you, but um, ray, ray tracing is the only thing it's not good at, and ray tracing is just a stupid marketing gimmick from NVIDIA. And some people are going, no, it's not. I've seen the games that have it. It looks better. I can see that it, it's a marketing gimmick. So it may be real, and you may actually see it in some games, but it's a marketing gimmick. Like, ray tracing is definitely something that they created, <laughs> and they put on their card to get you to pay two or $300 extra for the stuff that you get. Like, it is a marketing gimmick 100%. Like, 100%. Now, as far as features that aren't marketing gimmicks, like upscaling, so DLSS, uh, or on the AMD side, FSR, King those are not gimmicks. Hockey. Those are useful for gamers, in my opinion, and they make the game perform better. Whereas, again, in my opinion, ray tracing is just a marketing gimmick to get you to buy an NVIDIA card for... Look at this, these guys came in and stole that settlement. Piece of dog crap. Now I lost my food production here, too. This is pissing me off, everybody coming in and taking my settlements. Ugh, well, I guess I'll go take this one, and it'll make up for the food loss that I had there, but it looks like this one may be under siege already. Follow me. March on. Yeah, it is under siege. No, this guy's raiding his own territory? What? Doesn't make any sense. All right, suckers. I'm taking over around here. That's the way it's gonna work. Um, but yeah, I, I used NVIDIA cards for years, and I liked them a lot. But uh, they lost me whenever they came out and started charging $1,200 for the 2080 Ti. And then they came back and made it a 3090 and made it even more expensive. And then they came out this time again, charging $1,200 for an 80 class card. Like, NVIDIA can... They can stick it where the sun don't shine. I'm not paying that. Like, I'm not doing that. And I have the money to do it. Like, I make good money. I can certainly go out and buy these things if I want them, but I'm not paying that. Like, I'm not normalizing that kind of cost for the stuff. Like, I, I'm not playing that game. So I switched to AMD because they had a better price to performance value going on. And don't get me wrong, their prices are way too high right now too, but I switched because I do need high performance and I'm gonna go with whoever can give me the best performance for dollar in terms of rendering a game and I'm not paying attention to goofy crap like ray tracing because it's pointless. In fact, I don't think a single game I own even has ray tracing in it. Like so, in any case, that's my, my thoughts on the computer market. Like, I felt like the computer market was really exciting and fun and it was something I really enjoyed for the longest time. And then they kind of ruined it with the insane, greedy um, tech shortages going on during COVID. It drove all the prices through the roof and just became an absolute mess. Some people are saying, though, uh, that they could watch it. So, I don't know. I'll, I'll, I'll take a look at that. I'll start digging into what it would take for me to uh, start giving you all 4K videos and I'll... I'll give that some consideration, because it seems like there's at least a fair number of people here that would enjoy that. Sean was telling me his specs here, um, and it seems like a very prudent gamer build, like a, a an AMD 3600 processor, 1650 Super. Yeah, so you're, you're just using real, like, good... And see, those honestly, like... You can have a good gaming PC without spending a ton of money on it. I spent way too much on mine. Like, you end up at some point paying a huge premium for a ever-decreasing um, performance lift. So the higher you go, typically, like, it's it gets worse. So you kind of have to pick the spot that's right for your budget and um, do your best to find the card that's going to fit that and the parts that are going to fit that. And I think some people would be surprised you don't have to build, like, a bunch of high-end or even mid-tier stuff to have a good gaming computer. I've helped friends around me who didn't have a ton of money and they wanted to build a gaming PC for, like, you know, five to seven hundred dollars. 
and I've been able to work with them and either find you know cheaper new parts or good deals on used parts. And I've been able to build them some baller gaming PCs for that price. So you definitely don't have to go spend a ton of money like I have. You can still have an excellent gaming experience. There's another thing you can do too, which is is difficult on some of us pride-wise, but you can turn down the graphics settings. <laughs> and most of the games don't look that much worse when you turn down some of the graphics settings and then you don't have to pay all that extra money for those computer parts. That's, that's another thing to consider. But yeah, definitely some things to consider there. Ben, thanks for joining in. Arctic Fox, good to have you here. Says I played on an old Acer Nitro 5 laptop, so it can be a small fight just getting a newer game to run. Yeah, the laptops, it's it's trickier too because they can't get upgraded really. Corey says I got a new computer last year, the 5800X3D. Man, that is a solid gaming processor, and then you can still get a really good deal on those motherboards. So the 5800X3D is like is an absolute baller gaming processor right now because the price is pretty solid and it's just fantastic at gaming and then the motherboards and stuff are affordable as are the DDR4s. So I think that's a great choice. Radeon 6800 XT. Yeah. Um, that makes sense that you went with the last generation too because they were a really good deal and you got a huge discount. So you ended up getting a really good gaming computer and if, if you bought it about a year ago, I, the price would have been pretty good on a lot of that stuff because you're not going after the brand newest stuff. Sometimes when you buy the stuff that was a generation old, again, you can get some really baller stuff and save a whole lot of money. All right, we need to go crush some losers here. Can I see what I'm up against? They got a decent army here. Did I actually remember all my units this time? It looks like we did. That's a good deal. It's always good whenever you remember your units. I'm gonna spread out a little more like this and again I'm gonna spread out I'm gonna cover as much ground as I can to not let the AI be able to get around me sorry when I get talking about computer stuff I can go for a while because as you can tell it's something that I'm passionate about and I enjoy if you haven't ever built your own computer man it's worth it save your money give it a try at some point I didn't think I could do it. I found some good YouTube videos. There's a lot of great tech YouTubers out there that would love to teach you how to build one when you watch their videos. They got excellent stuff. You can do it. You can build your own PC. It's really not that difficult. And it is so satisfying to do that work of building it and then firing up the games and getting to enjoy them on something that you saved money for and you built. It is It is definitely satisfying. It's kind of like a, a, a nerdy tech version of gardening or something, right? When you go garden, you do all the work to plant things and you have to do all the work and you wait to see it come to fruition, but then when it finally does, you have this this good result because of it, so yeah. It's like gamer's version of gardening or something. They have some good units on the battlefield here. We may have a little bit of trouble with some of these units. I'm going to take these axes into their general. Double up a little there, and then we're going to push this way. I've got my own general here that I might use to try and take out some of their axemen here in the middle. I'm going to target some of those javelins that are right in the middle there, too. I may have some poor matchups at certain places on the battlefield here. Actually, let's pull this around. Let's get into the rear of some of these fights early. And then let's pull this amb or this uh, javelin unit around and try and make a difference. Yeah, our, our bows are doing a really good job of cleaning this up over here. That's good news. I'm worried about some of these fights, though. Like, they have me out-tiered pretty badly here. Like, this spear unit is just way better than what I have available. So we're going to have to to win a couple of localized victories here. Turn off the skirmish mode, and let's turn on guard mode. Let's move around here. I want to get into the back of this commander unit and put him under. Our own commander is going right up the gut here into these armored Anatolian spears. Hasn't been amazing for us. I really wish my commander had 
the uh, the advance. He's only got the hold stance, which is kind of annoying. I, I wish there was more stances on your bodyguard. Like, it feels a little disappointing to not have some of those cool new stances on my bodyguard units. Alright, let's see if we can dumpster this bodyguard. We're actually losing the fight over on our left-hand side, so definitely less than ideal there. But we are doing pretty good up here. I'm always very less than impressed with the kills from a bodyguard unit. They seem kind of underwhelming, but maybe you can upgrade and change them over time, too, to make them a little more exciting. Okay, there we go. We dumpstered their general. And then that one is dead, too. So our javelins did a good job. Uh, did some good cleanup work there. I'm going to start moving them this other direction. And then I think that spear unit's going to eventually lose, as will that sword unit. So I'm just going to bypass these fights and start heading up uh, to reinforce our other flanks. We're we're definitely getting some some good advantage at this point. They've still got a commander here. And then I've got this unit outflanked, but that is a, a well-armored spear unit here. So a lot of their units are storm warriors, which is going to make them a little more resistant to the ill effects of this storm. Okay, we cleaned up these fights. Let's see if we can finish this one off real quick. This unit can now start repurposing to the other side of the battlefield. I can use these archers to temporarily hold off a flanking maneuver. Not going to be great. I might end up getting a lot of them killed, but again, even if it's temporary, we'll, we'll use it. Keep running this way. Our swords are holding off that bodyguard fairly well. Might actually bring this bowman back here. Okay, they're they're um, kind of blobbing up over here into this fight, which is good for me at the moment because I actually just cleared this fight with my commander, and I can now pile into this one, and then the enemy will be surrounded. I'm gonna charge these axemen and see if we can put them off the battle map here for a moment. Try and get you all a close-up real quick, this storm fight. Honestly, the close-ups in this game are not super impressive. I do like the match this combat, but with no blood and without like a clear color distinction, like these are all a bunch of Hittite units pounding on each other. It's really hard to tell what's going on when you zoom up. So the game looks good, but it's the zoom-ins in this game aren't as fun to me as they have been in some of the others because of that, where like it's just very difficult to tell the difference between some of your units. At least it has been for me. What do you all think in that regard? All right, let's end this. So, got ourselves a victory. Steven, thanks for joining us. Michael, Marcus, good to have you all here. Warner says, I got to replace my old 1070 for a 40 Ailey earlier this year. The difference was huge. Yeah, I mean, that is a massive jump, Warner. That is a huge jump. And it probably feels like you're sitting on top of a golden gaming throne after that move. See, I, I've had expensive parts like that 4082. And, um, I, man, I don't like paying for them, but it is cool, like, getting some of that performance. So I've been kind of waiting for um, the uh, 7900 XTX to go on sale. It's, it's already fairly affordable. Well, for a high-end graphics card, it's way better priced than some of the others, but... I'm waiting for it to kind of hit closer, you know, to like the 900 price point or under 900. I'm, I'm occasionally seeing it. So I'm going to keep an eye out for some sales coming up because I'm trying to... I want the price to be as low as possible when I go for it to try and send the message to these companies, which is you make the price right and I'll start buying parts again. Uh, but when the price is high, not interested. Like that's, that's hopefully the, the message that some of these companies will get, which is... Price it too high and watch it rot on the shelf. Attack there we the go. Uh, Michael says, does this game have the same path drawing ability as in Attila? Um, I think if you're talking about like the custom like waypoint thing, if that's the case, yes. Like you can hold, I want to say it's like shift or control or something. You can draw a path with the right click. 
for your unit to follow. It does have that. Um, we're going to take high casualties on our bodyguard. Why? What here is going to cause high casualties to our bodyguard? Unless I just park myself in front of these javelins or something. Boy, the auto-resolve in these games needs some help. My path is clear. It's like, I don't want to fight this battle. <laughs> Look at this. We killed the invisible man, folks. Our perseverance is rewarded. We killed the invisible man. I claim this for our people. Why is Ramses appearing every time? I don't know. Some kind of glitch going on I like that. There was... my kingdom be torn asunder. Picked up a follower. Righteous king of Hati. Okay, so we have pretty good situation here. We we took Ankara, which I can use for additional food production uh, versus the other settlement that we had. I'm sitting here looking at the buildings are here. This one will add happiness, which is good because we just conquered this. I don't need the recruitment cost reduction. I don't need the recruitment slots here at the moment. Um, I do like the barley field for the income. And then this one is extra movement when in this province, which that's pretty handy. It also reduces construction costs. I'll leave that for the time being, at least. So at least I'll get some a little bit of extra food production out of this settlement to offset not being able to retake this one because the AI snatched it out from under me. Uh, but that means that I've cleaned up all wars on that flank, and I I don't know. I mean, this faction's technically still alive, but we have... I would advise against it. We have these little raiders, um, whatever these factions are, we have these little factions raiding on us and against some of our allies that we'll have to deal with, but I don't think I have a major war open at the moment. When I take a look at... The where's our victory conditions? Oh, I'm trying to remember where they put it in this game. Right here, victory objectives. Uh, we're 22 points of 60 into a minor victory, and we can get 34 points in total from homelands, 49 from foreign conquest. There's 18 of these that are undiscovered. So West Hattie is on our list here. And this is not a fellow Hittite faction, so we might want to look at this West Hattie next. That might be a good place to expand to. And then if I look at my other victory conditions, uh, cult centers. Over how many of these great cities does your name loom large carved in stone? Establish control over the famed city of Hattusha. And then we have Ordean. Which, it looks like that's in West Hattie. Then a whole bunch of undiscovered. So, I, I, again, West Hattie looking like potentially a good target. And I have an army relatively nearby. Let's check and kind of see how this new province up here of North Hattie is holding out. Like, it does look like it's stabilizing. Our influence continues to climb, which is going to drive our production up as well. So, that is definitely good news for us what we want and I can put some extra defense in here because clearly we're gonna have people back raiding behind us from time to time that that definitely seems to be the case with our enemies and then Michael says do the sea people armies come from the sea or do they just spawn like rebels from public order I've been asking that same thing tonight Michael so if anybody who is here in the chat knows Please let me know. Most of the ones I've seen appeared to have been coming up from like this vicinity, which I mean, the sea is right down here. So they've been, it looks like they've been moving from south to north here from the sea. But I'm not 100% sure of that. And it, it would be good to know. Would be good to know. All right, what else can we build here? We can improve the defenses of Hattusha. We have a 16 garrison army here with a lot of pretty solid units in it, which is great, because that means it's going to be hard for someone to just roll in and roll over my, my settlement. I'm very pleased about that idea. We could increase our gold income. Might as well do that. Let's take a look at some other potential outpost constructions. This one's adding legitimacy. This one is a religious shrine. And then we could put this one in here, which is going to boost production. 
Let's do that. Zipalandia. And again, we are boosting production here. Boosting production there and there as well. It's going to be extra favor. Influence legitimacy would be nice too. Uh, we need... I think you can only build one in each province. Right? Do we have that in this province? I don't see it. cannot build, you cannot construct this building as this province already contains the maximum number of buildings of this type, or it has already been built by another faction this province. I don't see a building of that type. Am I missing something? I wish it would point out the specific blocker here. Because I, I don't see one in this province. Am I blind? I mean, it's very possible. I miss a lot of things. I have the stone for it. Huh. What's the name of that building? Hittite Monument. Hittite Trading Post. Way Station. Yeah, I, I don't see a Hittite Monument here. Am I blind? Did we build it in a settlement? This happens. Influence. I, yeah, I got me. That seems strange. The other faction, maybe, built it? I, I mean, that's, I, I guess all we can assume for the moment is that this faction built it. So, perhaps that's the answer? I think that's the only other possibility that it's giving me there. Be Thanks for subbing, DRS. Appreciate court. you. We have much work to um, do. let's see here. Did we take a ruling yet this year? Oh yeah, we gotta wait till the next Shimsu Hor. Um, do a little gossip here. Hit get some in high standing influence there. Be civil. A commandment available at Ankara. It's because our ally owns this and then we own the other pieces. I like this Royal Gardens, uh, which just gives us a general boost. However, since this one is only food, and we don't have any wood production here. That would be a better buff with the increased grain imports. Shore up happiness a little bit. I have buildings that should take care of that and then workforce growth them. Let's do this increased grain imports. And we have an unassigned skill point to Great King of Super Little Yuma and I can max out this tree here. So we have finished his presence uh, title there. I keep doing all this stuff to reduce upkeep, and I swear it's like not making any difference whatsoever, so maybe I chose wrong on that whole thing. I'm gonna improve that settlement, and I'm gonna bring this other army back to kind of guard that settlement against potential sea people invading, because this bronze is very important to me. Uh, we went from the negative to a positive 231, and we haven't even finished building this tree up yet, so we should be able to get a fair bit more bronze out of it in my turn here. Since she was asking, maybe we need a new labor source? Maybe. Or more labor force. Yeah, sometimes I forget about labor force. Sometimes I forget. Uh, Niven asks, what's with the salt? If you're a live viewer, you get salt pennies awarded to you for spending time viewing the stream, for interacting with the stream. Um, you can then use those with the little commands uh, that you see people doing. Like, I think it's exclamation point salt, and it'll tell you how many you have. And then you can do, like, little gamble things and just kind of have fun with it. It's, you know, nothing you have to mess with if you don't want to, but I figured it was kind of a fun way for people to play around in the chat sometimes. I, you have to use the exclamation point before a command. I want to say it's exclamation point salt, and then there's exclamation point gamble. Um, and then you put an amount after the gamble, and you can do that kind of stuff. Warner, hope you get some good sleep. Thanks for joining us tonight. Hope work and family are all doing well. Life in general, hope it's going good for you. I'm going to go ahead and trade the court action. I don't have any court actions I'm particularly interested in at the moment. So, 
All right, these guys sieged us. That's kind of a funny joke. Really? Like, giving him that much chance in the auto-resolve seems a little bit insane. Okay. For the glory of Hati. Let's go ahead and punish. Keep them I need to get bonus. Super Liliuma back up. That should have gotten rid of that faction, I believe. Yeah, faction destroyed. So the Phrygians here are gone. That Phrygian faction is. Uh, there are more Phrygian factions, um, but like I think Gordian here needs to be our next target. Our, our ally looks like is already at war with them. The King of Hati honors me with this visit. How are they at war with someone and I am not? I didn't even know that was a thing. Maybe they're not at war with them. Yeah, they're not. They're just standing in their territory. Because if... It, I mean, if they're my... I don't think they're my ally. I think that was my vassal, is it not? Your presence is a welcome one. Yeah, this is my vassal. So, yeah, they can't go declare a war on their own. So they're just standing in their territory. But feasibly, my vassal might be able to help me whenever the time comes. It looks like they've managed to gain themselves quite a bit of territory after getting pushed out of some of their original territory by the sea people. So that was definitely a nice go-get for them to go grab some of that territory. Post-construction. Let's go look at some of our construction options here. We're still a little bit low on happiness here. That is production of resources, which is nice. Do you like the increased resource production? We could get a little more happiness if we put in the safe haven, as well as a little bit more food. Worth Hattie. Uh, build up the temple here. Garrison General, I'll move. Yeah, Why I'm not planning on moving Supalayuma at this turn. Well... Am I? I mean, this is allied territory. I should be able to replenish through allied territory. Let's stay one turn and add a little happiness to this before we walk off. I think it'll add a little extra influence and stuff, too. Looks like we had an expired Friendship barter again with Corinta. And we'll just we'll keep doing this. Uh, just try and keep relationships with him relatively cordial. I don't think it's something I badly need. Let's just go ahead and end another turn here. We must be move the points, move my armies back. Wizzy Fwizzy! I do remember you. He says, I don't know if you remember me, but I used to uh, use the alias Princess Luca. It's nice to see you. Yeah, it's awesome to see you, man. Hope life is good. Hope you're doing well. I absolutely remember. We had some fun times. I think we played some Halo together, too. But yeah, I remember you doing the, the Princess Luca stuff. It's awesome to see you, man. Hope life is good. Yeah, I'm still here. Old man air, <laughs> doing the same thing as always. Igor says, historically, uh, Hattusa was raised by mountain tribes north of Hattusa, but the empire was already weakened by disruptions on tin trade, or with the Egyptians, famine, disloyal subjects. Interesting. Yeah, I have no idea the historical surroundings, context, story, whatever you want to call it. I am not familiar with the Hittites whatsoever. I do like them in the game. I like their somewhat armored play style. Born to spill blood. Okay. I could finish the construction here for 126 gold. Let's do that. That way I can go ahead and um, I need more idle workforce. Okay, I have to build up some idle workforce and then we can build that building I need. I want to put some extra defenses on that settlement. It keeps saying that there's a wave invading, but I don't know if that's referring to the ones that were already here because I can't find those guys. Let's see. Let's see here. Got a ton of pending actions, but first and foremost, I want to go ahead and move. Man, I'm so confused where I'm at right now. 
Definitely old man era. I can't even... Where am I? What's going on? Someone point me in the right direction. Alright, um, I'm gonna go down here through my vassal's territory. I'm assuming that's allowed without me having to get some kind of agreement from them since they're my vassal. And I also assume we'll probably continue to replenish as we head through their territory. Let's understand this faction. They have quite a few wars going on. They don't have any allies. Um, those wars may just be with like little minor invasions, but... John, have a good night. Hope you catch us next time. It was great to have you here. And Wizzy, good to hear that life is going good. Excited. Excited to hear that. Yeah, I remember all the good times, man. I remember how all the fun times. The winds of battle still blow. I want to get more bronze production here. I want to crank out the bronze. And I need to stop at some point and recruit some better units. Um, and I could probably do that to some extent with people. Super Liuma. Probably should do at it. At least we are in this together. So we've recruited the max number. Do the army. Is this available units? You can feel the limited number of this units. Oh, it's just saying this army's full of units. Okay, I got it. But I'm also probably in the wrong stance. Um, I, I think? I don't know. Let's merge. Let's, like, merge all these swordsmen. Come, brethren. It is time. No, we can recruit in the stance. Interesting. Now, these are very elite units that are going to cost me some gold upkeep, and they're going to cost me some decent bronze upkeep. Um, but, I mean, it'd be sweet to have some of these elite units and kind of get a feel for, can they pull their weight in battle? And, I mean... Take a look at stats on, like, these Axemen, for instance. I mean, that looks pretty nice in terms of damage. They have a good charge bonus, too, 23. They've also got that advanced formation. Let's grab one of these uh, Axemen. Honestly, let's just grab two of them. Let's see what happens with a couple of these elite units. I am um, in need of comrades in arms. Again, that's going to eat up, uh, you know, some of our bronze, but this gives us a chance to test some of these really elite units. The other thing we could do here, too, is... Um, get rid of, say, like, you know, one of these spear units. Uh, it shows this one as a tier 2 unit, so maybe I'll get rid of one of these tier 1 spear units after I merge them. So let's get rid of this one. Go back in here to the recruiting. Let's grab one of these Hittite Royal Chariots. I want to get a bunch of them, but let's get one. And so what this does now is it gives me some very potent axe units to field at the front of my army. And we can disband these later and get units that we think are a better value. Um, we used up a lot of food. We're still just beyond our skids in terms of food. Um, and I could go do some trading of stone for food, probably, because I've got a lot of stone coming in. But the stone's kind of helpful, too, in the sense that I'm able to do a fair bit of construction with it. I'm trying to build up workforce here so that we can build that other building I need. So I need to wait there. Hattusha. Did I rebuild this somewhere? No, okay, so we built that there. So it's separate. So I've got good recruiting at Hattusha. And I'll need to get back there eventually to do some more recruiting. Okay. Let's take care of our court action. Wish I had a general to take over that spot. Who was it that gives you the... Yeah, let's just do that. Bodyguards, there we go. Alright, there we go. Steven says, Air, have you thought about uh, thinking of Crusader Kings? Love the game. Um, I liked Crusader Kings. But I would have to go back and totally relearn how to play it. And I wasn't very good at it even when I did know a little bit about how to play it. And that's a fairly big investment. And right now, like, I've been investing that time in learning Star Trek Infinite. But yeah, I do like Crusader Kings. I would like to know how to play it better. Because it was quite a fun game in terms of just, like, nonsense, shenaniganry type of fun. Um, I really enjoyed it. So I might think about it. But it would definitely be a stretch for me to go back and learn it again, because I'm just not 
super familiar with it at this point. To me, Star Trek Infinite has been the easiest Paradox game that I've tried so far in terms of, like, the lowest learning curve. And it's Star Trek, so, like, I feel like at least I kind of get, you know, what's going on in the game, whereas it feels kind of overwhelming sometimes on the other games with all the stuff getting thrown at me. But I'm not, you know, I'm not saying I wouldn't give it a try. I sure might. All right, Shimsu Hor again. We failed our ambition because I didn't pay attention. It says maintain a total of four units of tier six units. Yeah, I don't know why I picked that because I wasn't likely to accomplish that. Um, I wasn't paying attention clearly. Sixty regard with the commander, minus sixty regard with the high commander, but we gain influence faction wide and diplomatic relations with other hit tights. Sure. That sounds good, I'll take the benefit. Let's see. There was old Super Lilyuma. He was headed down from here. And we crossed. Here he is. My people I've got a sword first. unit here that is pretty much toast. And it's going to take a really long time to re replenish. Let's ditch that and then just recruit something else in its I place. Serve At least we are in this together. These are tier six units, so I, I guess I almost had that tier six thing. I mean, I can't afford the food upkeep here, but I can certainly afford the rest. Man, we are running short of food real fast, Come actually, Russia. because of how expensive those were to recruit. Wow, I didn't realize how quickly we were rolling up on a food shortage here. Eek. Um, we get food by winning battles, and I haven't been winning many battles, and we've still been bleeding it. Um, crap. Well... Death is nothing to fear. Hmm... It has been really annoying to try and keep up with food the whole time, like, no matter how many food settlements I get, and then ensuring that I build food production, and even at a lot of them boosting food production, we never have enough food. And I've got two armies and quite a large territory here, like, so I, I don't feel like that should be this overstretched. Um, it makes me wonder about Hungry food upkeep, war. and remember that every upgrade I've made was to reduce the upkeep of my armies. So, again. yeah, that one's using up 1,897 food. This one's using Certain up 2,700 food. And see, even with all my buildings, and from diplomacy, this one army eats almost all of that food. That definitely seems a little bit ridiculous, that the one army can eat up all the food production from all this territory. And like I said, I've even upgraded a lot of these people. And look here, I've got the... Well, I had the commandment in place. But I think it looks like someone took over that I'm not allied with, so I couldn't continue that. Um, but yeah, it definitely feels kind of annoying there. That... Just a constant battle for food. Look at this, I have two food production. Three here. Like, I'm just, I'm absolutely, like, so I've got three food production buildings there. i got another food production building there. Like, I am pushing hard to cover the food production, and we just can't. Um, so I guess I'm going to have to just get into diplomacy and start trading off my resources. Shore up the food. So let's go ahead and head in there. Um, take care of it. The food, the lack of food production capability. I mean, I'm not going to lie, it's, it's been pretty frustrating. It has been pretty frustrating. I am most pleased to see you, friend. <coughs> so it says my ally here has abundant food, but they're looking for gold and stuff. So let's propose a barter. I'm going to offer them up, uh, let's say like 10 gold. Then I have some decent bronze income. Let's offer up like I don't know, like 50 bronze income. Now let's see what I can get out of them. Can I get like 
300 food, 400 food, 400 food's a little too much. All right, what else could I offer? Offer like a little more bronze, maybe like 55 bronze for 400 food. No, we're still short there. About gold, how much difference does gold make? They seem to really want gold. There we go. Um, it's like I could do this for five turns and pick up I can pick up some decent food there, so let's confirm that. So that'll reduce the rate at which I'm losing food. All right, let's propose that, so that helps. And then what else can we do? So let's head back out of here. Let's find some other people who are looking relatively friendly. Are you here to corral your wayward subjects? I'm not sure how interested those people are in food. And if I go to... Either I don't understand the quick deal here very well, um, but I, I feel like Federation. Is anybody interested in I will unite this land. The king of Hati honors me with this visit. Yeah, see, like they're not interested. That's what. I fight for Hati. I fight for Hati, Lord of Tarantasha. All right, um, this resource is currently in short supply, so the faction values it more than usual. Who's not interested in food? These are the guys I'm about to be at war with, so I don't want to be trying to trade with them. This is an unexpected turn of events. Okay, let's work on a barter agreement here. Um, let's see here. So can I give him some gold? And bronze, maybe. Yeah, let's see what we can get out of him. 500. Oh, nope, he doesn't have that much food. Wow. Can't even get 400 out of him. What about stone? I've got a good bit of stone income. Wow, for like 200 stone income... Heck, let's make it like 500 stone income. How much food can I get out of him? I get a thousand food out of him for five turns. Which that would cut almost all the rest of our losses. Yes, good. There. That should keep me safe for a little while because at least I'll be bleeding the food I will unite this land. a lot slower and it'll give me a chance to get into some battles. See what I can do. Alright, we have a court action available. Administration is an unsavory medicine, but it Let's is do some a medicine. Gossip here, get some influence working back with these guys. Well, I mean, if I have anything that I can do to increase the amount of food. One and two turns, so our idle workforce is slow to build here. This army is we must be ruthless. not really needed for a whole lot right now, other than guarding against some some sea people, which I can't even see. I could cut some of these troops Always too, diligent. at least temporarily, even. So it's not like these are amazing troops that I can never re-recruit again. But I, I could cut this army down to say like. 10 units, and I've got like this real expensive chariot here too, but I mean that is a good unit to help me out. Let's see, I have 13 units, it's like, let's do that, let's just cut this army's down in size, there we go. That'll, that'll help me for a few turns, and then we'll see what I can do, and then maybe I can kind of slowly increase this army the world according to the size. But apparently my guys need to be put on a diet because uh, they are just really ripping through the food rations in the kingdom. They're eating the Hungry Man dinners every night. Let's see here. See what we can get to. Um, <laughs> Steven says feed him to the Crocs. Yeah, and then we can eat the Crocs. Works out great. 
this another sea people faction here? Who is this? Why do you keep starting new wars? Or getting into new wars? Like, I, I don't need all this. Like, what are you doing to me? I think it's just another sea people faction. So it doesn't look like any of the factions surrounding us. Yeah, it looks like a sea people faction. Okay, so it looks like we are ready to hit the invasion King here. Um, let's go ahead and declare war here. So, weakness. war were declared. And let's head over here. Am I in the force march stance? I am. Be prepared, men. Still says I can get there. Strike hard. Let's see if we can. Ordean does not appear to have any defenses. It's another food producing settlement, which at this point I will take every last bit I can get. Build some siege towers. Keep them close. See if any of the rest of their armies show up. Okay, there we go. So we are in the positive across the board right now, which is pretty spectacular. Hattie commands us all, Piers. Gossip. Even me, the great king. Air loves him some good gossip at this point. Got a settlement upgrade available at Ankara. Let's take care of that upgrade. Well, hold on now. I can build another food producing. <laughs> I can't do anything but build food producing. This one adds a little bit of food income. It's very minor. This one adds 5% to food income and all the way up to 20% food income. A crown washes away all blood. Why does it source buildings? Ports, fisheries on the Nile, should farm as far as Okay, I get it. Okay, for a minute I thought it was like Nile focus, but it's saying no, it goes into to any buildings that are producing. I get it. At least I think I get it. Let's see. This building here honestly seems a little bit pointless. Let's tear that down. And then let's do... Happiness here is struggling a little. So I might go ahead and build... Um, So we have the building that's boosting happiness. We could build the religious building to boost it further, but I'm going to focus on increasing food production because that's my beginning, end, and middle of day right now in this game. Is anything and everything I can do to increase food production. Like right here, that's another small boost to food production. Again, I'll take every last single bit I can get because we need every last single bit we can, can get a hold of at the moment. Steven says, one, two, three, four, air declares a thumb war. That's right. That is right. Francesca says, the Let's Game It Out YouTube channel. What are they showing, Francesco? Let's Game It Out? I could go try and give it a look. Remind me what they're showing that you want me to take a look at. Um, earlier, Lim Stella said, uh, if you're not Egypt, you won't have food. It's fine uh, early in the game, but later it's frustrating. Huh. Well, I guess that makes sense that Egypt would have more food production because they have the Nile and the floods and stuff that come. But yeah, at the same time, it does feel like the food levels here are, are pretty irritating. But maybe that just means we need to invade Egypt and take everything along the Nile. Uh, but of course, to do that, I need to have armies, which we do not. Um... Oh, they're going to come attack me. Good. I'd rather have an open field battle than the siege crap. Ooh, they've got four chariot units. Ha ha. Habana, habana, habana. That's a lot of chariots. And they've got some... They've got some good units in this army. This ought to be interesting. Well, it's a good thing we upped our game here in terms of units because the enemy did as well. I'm not worried about the infantry in like this first army but all those chariots coming in the second army are quite concerning actually about to see the direction they come in from we might be able to pin them up against a wall nope they're coming from behind 
enemy formation, which means that they are likely... I wonder where they'll deploy, though. I might be able to kind of back those chariots up into a corner and limit their movement. And then, like, if I get them to charge... I, and I disbanded some of my spear units, but... If I put some of my spear units behind the main line here, like this, and then, you know, archers, javelins, like, kind of trail them a little further behind still. I can turn off skirmish mode, and then I can just have some extra units here to kind of help hold up the flanks. I got my own chariots that I can use, and then I could hold... I could hold, like, my elite axes in reserve. try and limit damage. Let's let's see how this works here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of bolt across here and see if I can... Nope, they deployed right there. But still, hopefully this will give those chariots less room to maneuver, and there's a lot of woods around here too, which would not reign to the benefit of those heavy Anatolian chariots. But those chariots are going to be concerning. Um, there's five units of them. Or sorry, four units of them, and they, they can cause considerable damage in a hurry. All right. If I keep my flank up here too, this will prevent the enemy. Let's, so see this terrain here? There's like the houses and stuff. If I move up like this, I can let that terrain shore up my flank, at least one of them. Yeah, this, this should, limit the maneuver room of the AI, or at least force them to take a long way around or something. Okay. Archers are opening fire. Let's focus down some of those javelin men. shooting into the front of those shields Pull over here. I need to save ammunition for the chariots though too. It looks like some of their chariots are trying to take a long way out around me, but the AI is looking like they're a little... they're trying to just like reform all their troops right now, which is what the AI loves to do. I might be able to gain some advantage here by forcing an engagement. Push more reinforcements that way. Like, the AI doesn't have troops. Let's see if this forces some movement. Let's slow it down for just a second, because there's a lot, of, a lot of stuff taking place here. They're moving a whole bunch of infantry out past me there, which I don't understand. There is a group of chariots coming in. Multiple groups of chariots coming in, so we're gonna need to be ready to slow those down. I might throw another spear unit, yeah, right here, and then let's go ahead and back up these skirmishers, because they're probably gonna break through my front line, at least temporarily. Like, let's do this brace formation there for a second. So those chariots are trying to break through. Actually, they got slowed down and stopped there. So let's let's actually go ahead and counterattack those chariots, and let's throw some more units in their direction there too. They're kind of rolling these chariots on through my line, which is definitely the right way to play chariots. I'm gonna take my own chariots and swing through here and try and smash those javelin men back there. My spears are chasing the chariots through that formation and that I do not want, so let's let's just kind of be patient with our skirmishers. They continue to march units around me. I don't think they did. Let's continue to be patient with our skirmishers and let's kind of commit our reserves slowly. I'm gonna hit Play again. Never surrender. 
Alright, there we go. We got a really good charge right there. Soldiers of Hati! The gods are with us! Okay. We gotta get away from the spearmen. I don't know how my chariots are gonna do against their chariots, but I'm about to find out. Um Speaking of chariots, let's go over here and see if any of theirs are in range of my bows. They are not. The AI is actually doing a fair job of keeping their units away from my bowmen. I'm gonna throw some more units over here and I'm gonna try again to pull those spears back out of that fight. I've got it on slow motion so I can try and keep up with a few more things because the AI can just out control me unfortunately. We're being again chased by spears here. I don't want to get caught. These are heavy spears. They've got good mass. They're going to be very deadly to our chariots and we don't want any part of that. So I'm going to actually pull out this way away from those spears and other units. We killed their commander over here. And I actually may be able to swing out around these spearmen and smash into the back of that fight. We did get some good damage done to the chariots over here with our missiles. And there's another chariot unit coming across the front here. Let's focus fire these chariots and just try and hold the front line. That worked. We got all the way around. I can now crash into the back of this axe unit with these royal chariots. And I should be going pretty much full speed here. That is just going to collapse that axe unit. And it did just absolutely crush them. That was almost an instant rout. My Axemen now can, can come redeploy over here. We just got rid of one chariot unit. And I'm going to start focusing the next. As we rid ourselves of those chariot units, um, I should be able to maybe do some further damage here too. I might send one of my spear units through this. Oh. Hold on, I'm out of arrows with that Move. unit, so hold off. Spears. Let's plug this gap Move. here with some of these spearmen. Okay, my chariots are free. And my axemen have intercepted that spear unit. I can now set up for a rear charge on this, this formation over here, so let's do that. Alright, I am out of ammunition on two of my bow units. And we have limited ammunition left, so I'm going to turn off fire at will. And save a few javelin volleys here. In fact, I might chuck those back here into the woods. Alright, we routed a chariot unit there, whether intentionally or not. And then that leaves me... I'm going to try and get built up to full speed. Alright, now let's collapse into the back of this fight. Break their spirits! Some of their units are coming back from routing. It's understandable. All right, yeah, that absolutely crushed the rest of this fight. So two of their units immediately sent packing. And another on the way. So that's another roll-up. Zipliliuma is safe for now. We just used the rest of our bow ammunition, so I might actually just go ahead and throw these bowmen for numbers into this com combat. I've hurt their chariots a great deal here. Let's keep pushing with these axes. These extra elite infantry are definitely carrying some weight right now and making it easier for us to stick around in these fights. Okay, we just routed another one of their chariots with our own. And I now have more axe units free that can kind of roll up. I'm going to try and stay out of the woods, but there's a juicy looking couple of blobs over here that I need to work my chariots towards. This is working out well now. Let's sit my javelins into this fight here. They, I don't know whether they can hold off that Axeman or not, but we're going to try. Let's see if we can get rid of their chariot unit here real quick. Not the best terrain to be operating is on. My general pushed through a routed unit there. Our chariots have been doing a pretty good job of routing theirs. I think ours are heavier. Indeed we did. Wow, this this royal chariot is absolutely crushing our enemies. Like, I mean, just 
savagely crushing our enemies. It's going into the woods here, which is not ideal. But maybe we can swing it on into the back of this general and go for the, yep, the knife in the back here. Destroy them! I might let my chariots get some kills on these units as they flee. Help build up chevronage for them. But that is going to be a big victory for us. They had some, they had some powerful units in this army. So I am excited to get this victory. We took some damage with some of our units, but it is a, a, a victory. And it was a fun battle. I do like the open field battles pretty well in this game. Um, they're not as exciting as a, a Warhammer battle because of the lack of magic and monsters and all that other kind of stuff. But that's not what this game is. And so I do like the land battles. I do not so much like the small settlement battles or siege battles. We got 400 kills on most of those chariots. Wow. There we go. Boy, we put a hurt on our enemies with those Royal Hittite chariots. That is the Royal Wrecking Crew, or Apache's Pain Train, if you will. I am going to take the replenishment because we could have more enemies in the area. I am blessed. But Gordian should be well within our grasp on this next turn. And then we can try and increase food production there as well. Auxiliary chariot. Five units of auxiliary charioteers hailing from home and abroad are available in special recruitment if we maintain six units of chariots, which I'm not likely to do. If we hold 16 settlements, we have a current of 12, we could get this prize, and that's over the next 20 turns. That very well might be possible to get four more settlements. Or if we conquer something that has wood, we get 2,000 wood. I don't remember if there's any wood settlements near where we're at. There very well may be, and that might have been the easiest one to go for. Yeah, there's one right down here. I don't know if we'll get to it. Um, Attack the enemy! Yeah, we've got a fairly simple auto resolve here. Hopefully, the auto resolve doesn't screw our chariots over too bad. I know it typically has been in the past for, for the glory total war Hattie. games. That is an expensive unit for us to be getting them wrecked like that. No, it was. It looks like it was all right. All right. Um, I love the fact that we're picking up some food from these battles. We definitely need to refinish, replenish that big store of food that we went through. And now we're in control of Gordian. And there's, there was a temple here, uh, which we're going to... If I fix this, can I, like, switch it over to the deity that I'm worshipping? I don't know. I'm just going to demolish it. Um, we do have some recruitment here that could be handy because we do need to replace some of our units. We need this food production, that's for sure. This building's not going to do me a lot of good. That building's not going to do a whole lot for me at the moment. The influence could be handy at the moment. All right, there we go. We'll tear down some of these buildings, and we'll try and increase the food production here as well at Gordian. There's another bronze production over here, so that would be huge, because then we could add more of these bronze upkeep units. And Pessinus has wood, which again is important, and that would put us with the border up against Corunta, who has been we will ensure you get everything pretty amicable you to us. Not interested in confederating. Uh, he's actually not terribly far from vassalizing. It's not close, though, either, but... It says, no, these large Tier 5 temples are unique buildings in specific settlements, so should I keep it, I wonder? Is it going to do me any good? It gives me a legitimacy. Reduces upkeep for armies in the province. Increases happiness. Let's keep it. Let's see what happens. Does it take me to repair it? Let's repair it. Doesn't take hard, hard, much to repair it. Let's repair it. Okay, our other army is just guarding our settlement against a potential 
see people incursion, but because we've reduced the number of units in it, that's that's helping Veteran us. Rebellious mob theft prediction here it can. Uh, what does this adjudicate grievances? The judge arrives. Happiness in this province. That's kind of cool. People will be heard. All right. Take that. We have a lot of pending actions here, apparently. Local deities. Oh, we picked up that new deity slot. Excellent. Thank God. So this one, the devoted general gains a bigger aura size, charge bonus, speed. This one buffs the melee attack by a lot in the melee damage. It's kind of cool. Holy cow, for Devoted General, this one reduces upkeep cost by 30%. I think right now, this is the one that we have devoted for... If we put this one on... If we, like... I guess if we do this one and then Devoted General... I think that means that we could then reduce the upkeep cost significantly for Supalayuma. So we need to um, build up some... Mighty one. We need to he build up some united. stuff here. Center Tusa. So, if I build, let's go take a look here. So, for instance, Ordean, it's a Hittite trading post, a lookout post, way station. Let's see. I kind of want this because it's going to increase production of some of my... Let's see here. I think if we repair that temple, it gives us a lot of favor. So that would probably mostly cover it. Let's see what happens when we repair the temple, and then if I need to, I'll, then I'll mess with these. Let's let's stop that. Um, how do I stop it from tearing down? Cancel, demolish. Okay, there we go. Let's see what happens there. We got a royal decree available since so we finished that one. Well, I know something we should be looking for. That food. Food income during collapse, food income during crisis, prosperity. Apparently we need to be working on that, which is only nine turns away, so let us do it. Okay, all right, so that'll be our next look at the Royal Decrees. And let's take some more. Get our court action available. Hattie commands us all, peers. Even me. The take a judgment. King. It's diplomatic relations influence. Let's do the compensate their losses. Okay. Um. All right. We are losing a little bit of legitimacy because we won a battle. What? How do you lose legitimacy for winning a battle? I will not let my kingdom be torn. Explain that one to me. I am lost on that. And then where is it that we use the legitimacy stuff? Like I'm trying to remember where it shows, like where legitimacy shows and what it it's... We have a new title available. It's the steadfast bodyguard tier five units. Okay, Let's throw that title in there. Um, good here. Ending action settlement upgrades available. Anchor has got another upgrade available. Let's do that. 
Post construction, other construction. Do we have any food upgrades we can make? Because obviously I'm interested in that. Still need more idle workforce here. No, we've got enough. We can build the garrison quarters. There we go. All right, let's end our turn. I think if I read that right, we should have immediately like 250 influence because of that building with the new god, which I think then means we can go dedicate Superlilyuma. To that god, which would then get him a 30% upkeep reduction, which would be a lot, because his army's very expensive. And then we could switch that other guy to the other dedicated god. And then we probably want to focus on getting more of those slots, too, because those benefits seem pretty, pretty big. Like, those are some of the biggest benefits I've seen available to us. And then if we also get the settlement just to our west here that has more... It looks like our allies are absolutely beelining it for pessimists. They want that bronze. That sucks. I hate the AI for doing this. Like, I need these settlements, but, like, I'm, and I'm glad that my ally is attempting to help, but at the same time, holy crap, that's annoying. Like, I'm trying to conquer this area. Like, go f go find your own fight, man. It's like little brother. King of Hati. I can't get there. History will remember me. Like, go somewhere else. <laughs> Do something else. Oh, he's going for Pessinus. Okay, okay, all right. I, I mean, I would like to have Pessinus as well, but I'm more interested in the bronze production over here. Okay, woof. I was about to get upset there. But that, that's not too bad. That's not as bad. Steven, have a good night. Thanks for joining us. Let's, um, let's head into this local deities. And then let's dedicate... Well, it doesn't show us having enough yet. Does it take a turn now that we've repaired this building? Yeah, maybe this has to be repaired for a turn, and then we get that favor, and then we can swap those up. So I'll keep an eye on that. Righteous king um, of let's Hattie. go ahead and go take this. We'll get king more bronze production Hattie. out of it. Make it count. <laughs> Look, it's gonna beat up my chariots. <laughs> the only unit here that's going to get damaged up. I mean, yeah, I guess if you drive the chariots right into their spearmen on the streets. None will that's, this is ridiculous. CA needs to fix that. Like, what player is just going to run their chariots in the middle of that fight? Like, our other units don't get beat up, but our chariots do because we just run them right into a terrible position. That makes no sense. Francesco, thanks for joining us tonight. Appreciate you being here. grants wisdom. Alright, so 10% production resource increase. Let's tear this down. Do some other work there. We have the bronze production. That is good. Do not need this building. I will keep the one for happiness because we probably have a lot of happiness to shore up in this province. There we go. Build some extra food production. And then... Let's actually just take care of our court actions, and then I might just go ahead and end the turn. Be seated, peers of the court. We have much work to do. Yeah, I think I'm just going to go ahead and pretty much end the turn here, except for the skill points. King I'm going to use that skill party. point to keep buffing replenishment now. Because replenishment will help us be ready to fight quicker. And so definitely something good to have. General not move. We're going to ignore that for now. Let's end our turn. I like that thought. Wrong god. Which one did you talk? Did I... Wait a minute. Which one? I'm not really sure what you're getting at there. Maybe in, uh, he got pushed back. At Pest or no, he just raided it and then took it. Mobson, uh, tell me more what you're saying there with wrong god. Like, tell me what you're... If you go to the crown tab, you can see how to use legitimacy, but it won't get benefits until 200. Okay, thanks for the reminder, Mobson, but tell me what else you're thinking there in the, uh, 
wrong god thing you said. Make sure that I catch your comment because I want to. I want to learn here. I feel like we're making some progress, though. Um, yeah, sure. Um, let's see. Ushka. Oh, I picked the wrong god on the screen. Okay, I get it. That's why it didn't give me anything from the deity. Okay, okay. all right, yeah. I picked... Arena instead of the other one. My bad. I Okay, whoops. Can I change it, hopefully? No, hang on. Which god was it? It had the reduced... Devoted general, fatigue buildup. What? Now I'm confused. One of these had, like, reduced upkeep with devoted general, right? So the building is for this one, but where did I, I saw a an upkeep reduction under Devoted General on one of these, but now I don't see it. Was it for Arena? And I just have the wrong building? Yeah. Okay, so Arena is the one that gives you the reduced upkeep, but the building I have is for the other god. Okay. Dang it. Yeah, I, I get it. So we're probably just going to have to use this one for now. Hold on, wait a minute. How do I switch this now? Oh, we want to replace Arena. Okay, I got it. I got it. I didn't realize that this was a little screen for... Okay, took me a minute. As per usual. Well, again, this is not... Not as good as what I had hoped. Um, because Arena would have given me that reduced upkeep, but I don't have the stuff in place for Arena, and I, I guess whatever. This kind of gives us another... Another option here. So, for the Worship God, we get extra charge bonus, melee damage, speed, and XP. If I do... Here... I guess we'll just throw this guy into this one for now. Um, that'll work. I definitely want Arena at some point, but I guess I would have to go build the right buildings and stuff, and that would take some time and effort that I... It would be nice, but I guess we'll just have to survive without at the moment. Okay. So I'm getting the extra food production out of these areas. I'm, I'm going for all the food that I can get. Pessiness is under control of an ally, so we've done the winds of kind of all we can do over here. If I take a look at the victory objectives, that did gain us a few points because we mostly control West Hattie. We got three of four there. It's further to our south. So Corinta is going to have a lot of influence there. We got all of Hattusia, uh, Hattusha. We got Ziplandia. These are other Hittites around us. So at some point we're going to have to take on other Hittites here. Is what it looks like to me. 
or we have to kind of just leave theater all together and head for a different area. Well, we definitely need to figure out where we want to go next. Um, definitely no, want to figure that not. out. I might get rid of a couple of these swordsmen and replace them with some, some better axe units. Let's maybe go ahead and condense, merge these units. My people come first. And I need to keep some... Sp oh, actually, sorry, we have these uh, tribesmen that are probably slightly less useful there because they're so light. Let's get come rid of them. It is time. And as far as recruiting goes, we have these chargers, which is a tier 2 spear. They do pretty good damage. They're going to be good against chariots. And I have one unit of them already. We could get rid of this unit and replace it with Come, the Chargers, which is a higher tier party. unit. And these Raiders, I believe, are the Axemen it's making available to me here. And they look like they do have the advanced stance. Let's open up their special abilities here and take a look. So we have Reckless Advance, which will give them extra attack minus melee defense. They have the Raider trait. They can move hidden in any terrain. And their flanking attack is improved. <coughs> so, these would be really nice flanking units. We also got access to some kind of mid-tier Javelin men. So we got these renowned Phrygian Javelin throwers. Which I believe we have a single unit. Oh, those are our armored Hittite skirmishers. and skirmishers, the renowned ones, man, that is some painfully good damage there, though they're they're after like their melee is not amazing, but they are javelin men, so I probably shouldn't be looking for it to be too amazing. I think I'm gonna grab a couple of these raiders. A crown washes away We've got a brutal blood. charge bonus, and if we were to run this like if we were to run these units up the flank and get a hold of someone, it looks like it would just absolutely collapse. Uh, any unit that we can get around and, and outflank. Tusha's got a settlement upgrade that we can make here. Let's do that. We can increase our bronze output there. We have a building slot available here. We built all the food stuff we can build there. I can't build anything else here at the moment that I want to, but the refugee center would give me a tiny bit of extra food. Again, same thing here. I've kind of out of options. Let's just uh, go ahead and end another turn here. We can continue our um, we can continue our trades in order to keep our food in the positive. And then what we'll do is continue to build up buildings. And I need to go find a next area to conquer. So, apparently Arena buffs food production when we build her outpost in her province. That would be helpful too. I guess I could swap the one god I have and then convert all of my outposts and stuff, right? And then I would be able to use Arena's buffs. I'm pretty sure. If I understood that right, let's go take a look at that, see if we could do that. Because I would like to get the reduced upkeep that Arena provides. Because, like, for instance, our barter agreements just ended. Look at this, though, we're in the positive, even though our barter agreement ended. That's that's not bad. Like, this is probably the best we've been in a while. I'll probably be back in the negative whenever this one recruits. But um, still, like, that's, that's the best we've been in quite some time. But we also just... We have some research going that should help us. Even me, the great Form our intrigue. Let's do a little gossip here, and then be seated, peers of the court. Some plots going on there that I'm just do. not very interested in. Let's go back to yeah. So powers of the crown, we got to get over 200. Trying to bring that legitimacy up. Um, we need. Man, everybody always builds a monument before I can, you jerks. Build your monument somewhere else. Losers. 
Okay, um, let's see, uh, local deities, if I go in here, and let's say we dump this guy. So let's, let's say that we go to worship Arena. Let's see if I can do this right. Worship. We replace... Which one was which? Is that... I wish it would do their name when I mouse over it. Ah, local deities. Okay, yeah, so, so... Chaushka is the one standing up with the big hat. Okay, Kumarbi. I think we want to switch him to Arena. Let's worship Arena and we'll replace this guy. Oh my gosh, it's going to cost me 555 gold. Ah, we got a bunch of gold. Be all right. Let's, let's do it. Alright, so let's do that switch. And then it said it was going to take three turns to convert my buildings. So that's good. Worshipped, and then shrines and temples. Yeah, it said it would take three turns. So I'm assuming it does it... Mobson, since you seem to know this, can you tell me... Is, is it going to automatically convert... My shrines and temples, it said it would take three turns. Is that all automatic? I'm, I'm assuming it is based on what I've seen here. Yeah, so see, we can do Arena and Shauska. I think I'll have enough from Arena, but we could do this to try and buff Arena all the way up to the top tier, which I think is what would give us the 30% reduction. Trying to make myself understand this more, because obviously it's going to be important. Um, it definitely seems like these buffs are very, very good from the religious worship, so I want to take advantage of those. I'll wait to build that one and kind of see where we land after a couple of turns. I'm going to go ahead and in the turns here and just kind of see what happens. I think I've got this right here. We'll see. We'll try on trial and error. See what we see what we get. I feel like our army is substantially stronger now too. It's not like absolutely amazing, but we, we certainly have some solid axe units. If I swing back through Hattusha, we can pick up some better bow units, potentially, which would be good. We could even get more chariots if we want to. The one chariot unit, though, might be enough because they are a liability in certain situations, and we, I don't think we would want to weigh too heavily on chariots. Oh, plus 5,000 food? Heck yeah, I'll take that. Recruitment, influence, yeah, I'll, I'll take this one. All right. Picked us up a nice chunk of food, because we are in the negative now, which I figured we would be For once Hattie's we glory. got finished doing that little bit of work. But, let's go look at the local deities. I'm pretty sure those religious shrines are going to change automatically. Yep, they're changing. So they're changing automatically. That's two more turns. Okay. I understand that now, so that's something new that I feel like we've been able to learn here. Yeah, we have a lot better recruiting capabilities at Tushin out. Let's see how we can kind of stabilize this province so that I can leave it be. It is looking pretty stable. We've got good influence, we've got good happiness. Go ahead and throw that ref. Er, actually, let's. And some better defenses here would probably be smart because we're not going to be anywhere near here. Let's do that. I'm going to actually kind of start the journey back home. It's going to take a while. But um, I'm not really sure where to go next. We're kind of landlocked in this direction, and I have an ally here that's kind of taking up everything. Karunta is on fairly good terms with us. I'm grateful for the chance to express my admiration. I mean, we could just attack some of these factions. 
They already have enemies. Same enemies as us. They don't have any allies. I guess we don't have to go far. We could just attack some of these folks closer to us. Let's do that so I don't end up spending 10 years marching across my territory just to go attack something all the way on the opposite side. For Hattie's glory. Oh yeah, there's gold Let production there too. Begin. More food. Yeah, these guys might be a better target. I do have that one army over here. We can keep an eye out for you. Yeah, let's let's do that. Let's do that. Well, I feel like we've made good progress in understanding religions. We made some good progress with our royal decrees because we use it to unlock another religion. I'm now working on that increased food production through the decrees, plus on the map. We have the arena thing coming over the next couple of turns. I actually want to finish that before I end the stream. Because I would like to... to take stock and take note. Oh, we've already done that one. That's what I was thinking. Uh, or no, no, we haven't yet. Able to discredit. Here's our judgment. We can pick up another 5,000 food. Now I'm feeling really good. We've built up a little food storage here again. We had another barter expire. That's why we went into the negative on the food, actually. That was one of our last food barters. We're a little bit low on wood and stone production at the moment. But that just doesn't seem like the end of the world. Through the influence there. Let's go ahead and end this one. I want to see what happens when we finish getting things converted to Arena, and then I switch Super Liliuma to be devoted to Arena. I want to see how much that impacts our resources. Because I, I think it will be a big impact, and that's what I'm looking for. So I, I feel like this has been a good episode for me. I know more about the game now. I want to keep learning a lot more about the game. And I like what I've learned tonight about the religions. This makes more sense to me now, how to use them, how to go unlock more slots, the type of benefits and stuff you can get from them. That, this has been quite helpful for me. This may not be news to a lot of you, but this feels, like I said, useful to me for sure. I need another idle workforce to finish this building. And I do want to do that because I want to have pretty good defenses because I'll be away. A lot of the time. Let's take a look at this court actions. The thousand gods bear witness. We are called to noble work. <sighs> Got a lot of construction settlement upgrades. Okay, we can upgrade to a top tier settlement here too now. Let's do all those that we a can. Dynasty. I like that thought. Awesome. Now on this turn, we should be done converting everything over to Arena. And then I don't know if we have to wait an additional turn to get that favor. I'm, I don't think we have to. Okay. Yeah, and then we'll start the next war. Get some more territory, which will take us further on the victory points. Uh, I don't mind losing a court action. They're not that important to me at the moment. All right, now we can devote Supaliliuma to Arena. Now let's pay attention here. So we are minus 195 on food, 836 on stone, which I don't think that plays any. So it's gold and bronze. So 367 gold, 17, or sorry, 367 bronze, 117 food. Let's confirm that. A king oh yeah. Men and gods. Yeah, that flipped the script. That flipped the script big time. That was worth. 100% worth. And if we build a little bit more infrastructure, I think we can push that all the way up to a 30% um, reduction. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. This is, this is where we needed to be. I wish I would have known this way back at the beginning of the game. Yeah, we are building this. That will give me an increase of 50 favor. So let me go back in here, local deities, arena. So that would put me at 580 of 600. So I need one more building for arena in order to 
push this up over the top. So we've got the tier two building for Arena there at North Hattie. We could just put one right here at Ankara. Boom. Done. Sweet. Oh man, I'm excited now. I am excited now. That is that is good news. That feels like a huge win. Look at that. Now we can we can get even better troops into the army with Super Liliuma. Righteous King of Hattie. I feel like that's not a desperation thing that I need to do right this minute, but it also means that I can put more troops in this other army and send it to work as well. Against these enemies, because they're not far from me. Alright, I finally feel like I'm I'm winning something here. My ally is probably gonna be down here stealing settlements out from underneath my nose in mere moments, but I'll grab this gold settlement. And there's another food settlement there. Definitely want all of it. Okay. This is good stuff here. Now we're gonna grab more gold too. We're gonna be fabulously wealthy with gold. Feel like we're turning the corner here. I claim this for our people. We just got the Anatolian Traveler. It says discover all Hittite realms. Sweet, so I got me a steam achievement there. Noble king. They weren't even getting the Oh yeah, they were. Okay, I was like, they weren't mining the gold. Right, so there's our provincial capital. This is our settlement. Okay, so if we want to take all of Central Hattie, that might be possible. Might be possible. Okay. Well, folks, I think that's gonna be all the time I have for tonight. I feel like we have accomplished much, and I am very happy with the direction the campaign is headed at the moment. I had a lot of frustrations uh, with our... Um, I had a lot of frustrations with this game in general, and I still do in a lot of ways. But I feel like I learned some stuff tonight that made this a lot more enjoyable. Understanding the deities helps me a lot, because that's actually kind of a nice feature here. And I'm sitting here thinking about deities... It'd be cool to see something like this in a Rome-themed game, or a medieval-themed game. Like, having the deities make a difference like that. That would be nice. So, I, I kind of like it. Like, that's it's a neat feature. Building the infrastructure to them, getting the benefits from it. It's kind of a way for you to get some of the quote-unquote magic stuff that you get in Warhammer without it having to be quite so fantasy. It is fantasy, obviously, because when these people you know, laid down and prayed to Arena. It didn't suddenly make their armies cheaper. I get it, you know, but at least it's, like, historically tied. So I, I do like that feature. It's a good feature. So I, I'm kind of excited about this, and I want to unlock this other slot, too. So we'll go take a look at that one maybe on the next run. Anyway, hope you all enjoyed it. I will see you Friday with some more.